A couple of months ago, Pat McGorry, who you heard before, former Australian of the Year, a beautiful man, a great champion for better mental health in Australia, uh, asked me if I'd join the Board of Australians for Mental Health, and uh, he's one of those people you can't say no to. Uh, I bring the experience as the Chairman of Lifeline in Australia. Any Lifeliners here tonight? Lovely to see you. Fantastic. There's someone from the eastern suburbs. Is that you over there? Yep. That's right. I hope you got your bus fare home. Uh, so it's very rare we let people in on a Friday night. You must be staying the weekend, obviously. Um, nothing, nothing, nothing insular about the peninsula. Uh, and I'm the chairman of Lifeline Australia. We have a fantastic lifeline here on the northern beaches. Uh, I've had the experience of suicide my, myself, and I've had the... Um, I live with a mental illness. I live with depression. It's probably a mild to medium depression. That's all right. I'm right, mate. Thank you. And it's one that I live with through medication and through regular treatment and doing my best to sleep well, to exercise and to look after myself and particularly to avoid stressful situations. Australians for Mental Health were formed with a very simple objective and that was to gather the community at large and organisations as almost a political movement to increase the debate and the importance of mental health in our community. And since it started, the importance of what Australians for Mental Health do has only grown. Two weeks ago, we got the latest suicide figures in Australia. And between 2016 and 2017, suicide rose by 9%. This was from the Australian Bureau of Statistics annual report on the causes of death in Australia. With the exception of lifestyle diseases like diabetes, every other form of death dropped and suicide increased. Now, we've never spent more money on mental health and suicide prevention than we do today in Australia. We've never talked about it more. We've never done more about it. You're all here on a Friday night supporting the cause. This wouldn't have happened 20 years ago, probably wouldn't have happened 10 years ago, but people are out and people are moving forward. But we all know that suicide is a preventable, a largely preventable death. Suicide is a largely preventable death. And if 3,128 people drowned every year in Australia, if eight people drowned every year in Australia, if eight people died in car accidents every year in Australia, there would be Australians marching on the street. And I'm, I'm in a balance at the moment. I must, and appropriately so, acknowledge that we've come a long way. There's more money, we're talking about it, we care about it. I have a very, personally, I have a very simple post-political noble cause for me. And that is that we think about and we talk about and we feel about mental illness in exactly the same way that we think about and we talk about and we feel about physical illness. There is no shame in having a mental illness. No shame. I've never been ashamed about my depression. I talk about it openly and I want others to talk about it openly as well. And we should have the same attitude we have towards openly talking about a physical illness in the way in a way we can openly talk about mental illness. So half of me says we've come a long, long way. But I look forward and we've got a long way to go. I had my suicide attempt a little over 13 years ago. And last year I got very unwell again. And I found myself having to go off work and try and get better. And I, at one stage, was so bad that I put myself into our local hospital, Mona Vale, uh, for because I was feeling very suicidal. And they kept me overnight. My wife Lucy came down and I was discharged the next day. Now, please don't think I'm criticising the wonderful staff who work in our health system. But I haven't had a follow-up phone call since I left that hospital. If you have a baby, we have a health system that sends a nurse around to settle you into your coming back from the hospital to home and it's a brilliant system. We send you out of mental health facilities without a single bloody phone call. And the greatest single indicator of suicide is a previous attempt of suicide. So we know 
you walk out of a mental health institution or a hospital with a higher chance of suicide than the average person. These things aren't hard to fix, and there's many of them. And part of me is proud of where we are in Australia, and part of me is angry about where we are in Australia. And I'm telling you, we have to band together as a country and do something to reduce suicide. When those figures came out, I advocated that we need to set a target for suicide reduction. I want zero suicides. Lifeline thinks there should be zero suicides in Australia. And I'm sure you'd agree. We can start by setting a target to reduce suicide by 25% over the next five years. And some people say to me, well, what's a target? It's just a, a number on, on a piece of paper. Well, the Scottish National Government set a target some years ago to reduce suicide by 20% in 10 years, and they reduced it by 18%. What a target does is it focuses the mind of us in the community, politicians, it's all of us, not just politicians, the bureaucrats, the health professionals, all of our communities to work towards it. And having that very big number up there of a suicide reduction target will force all of us to galvanise behind the work we need to do to reduce suicide. We have lots of targets in our community. We target how much recycling there should be and a whole lot of other things. So we shouldn't be worried about that. I also think we should report suicides the same way we report the road toll. If people open their newspaper or turn on their TV or went online every day and saw what the suicide rate is, we would get sick of it very quickly. I also think we need to change the message a little bit. You heard Stuart talk about Stuart and Anne's daughter's tragedy. And I know what it's like because I've been there and I've come very close. And I thank God every day I didn't complete my suicide. But every suicide is a tragedy and as Stuart said, it leaves a wake of tragedy and trauma around it. And things are never the same. They're never the same. Life goes on but they're never the same. Part of the challenge I think we have, and it's demonstrated by the, the um, mood in the room right now, is whenever we talk about suicide, whenever I talk about suicide, and I talk about suicide several times a week, there's a great blanket that falls over the room because people feel very sad about it appropriately and we feel a great um, sadness. I think we need to send the message of hope and help. Do you know, when someone's physically ill, we say, let's get you through this. We'll all gather around, we'll get you through this, we'll pull you through this difficult period. I think we need the same language when we talk about people being mentally unwell. We'll get you through this. How can we get you through this? Because there has to be a message of, love, of hope and help, of love, and a very simple message, and I say this not from a religious perspective, not from a values or moral-based perspective, but we need to say to people, choose life. Choose life over death. There's more to, live, more, more to live for than there is to die for. There's people who love you and there's people who will help you and get you through. We need to have a positive message attached to that. And this is important to us at Lifeline. We get our number flashed up probably every day. Every time there's discussion about a suicide or whatever it might be, call Lifeline. We don't tell you why to call Lifeline. I think we should say, call Lifeline if you need some help and we'll get you through the other end. Because most suicides are preventable. I know that can be hard to believe if you've been there yourself. I know you, that can be hard to believe if someone in your family has taken their own life or a close friend. But it's the reality. But it only works if we get there. I, um, I'm very proud to be associated with the Australians for Mental Health. I'm obviously incredibly proud to be associated with Lifeline and I love living on the northern beaches. And we live in a beautiful part of Australia, an incredible part of Australia. When I was in Parliament, I used to tell people that I was the member for Home and Away. <laughs> uh, and you know, we have the same tragedies here that we have all around the country with respect to suicide. Stuart and Anne come from Albury in country New South Wales. In country towns, because of the nature of those communities, you often know when somebody takes their own life. It's hard not to know, particularly smaller country towns. 
But in the suburbs that we live in, somebody five doors down could die from suicide and we wouldn't necessarily know. We don't have the same connections. We might know it through the surf club or the sports club or through school and those sorts of things. But we here in the northern beaches are blessed, but we're challenged as well, and we've had suicides on the northern beaches that break all of our hearts. So my experience has been one of great success at an early stage in my life, right down to the great and deepest point I've ever been in my life, and then redemption and onwards. I've done it with an extraordinarily beautiful wife who's seen me through all of that period and continues to love me and help me and care for me. Three wonderful children. You'll have to tell that to your brother and sister when we get home that I said that about them. Um, lots of great friends, uh, great doctors, fantastic mental health nurses. Any mental health nurses here? Fantastic mental health nurses. You're fantastic. Um, and wonderful groups of people who brought in by you, Eleni, tonight, and thank you for what you're doing tonight, who come together for this cause. When I talk about my experience, and as I said, I have depression, I take one pill in the morning, two pills in the evening, I keep the balance in my life, and I see a psychiatrist fortnightly to keep myself balanced. And I try and do the best things for myself and avoid the stressful situations. But it's been hard, and it is an up and down journey. And it's difficult. Uh, I, have good, I still have bad days. Um, I have more, many more good days than bad days. But I like to finish this speech by, talking, by, by quoting from um, Richard Nixon, the 37th President of the United States. Uh, for those of you who, uh, who are young here, you'll never have heard of him. If you're a, if you're a Simpsons fan, Milhouse, Milhouse, the character Milhouse is named after Richard Milhouse Nixon. So he left office in disgrace on the 9th of August in 1974 and he delivered this rambling speech. And if you're a YouTube user, go and find it on YouTube, Nixon resignation speech. And amongst, uh, in the middle of this speech, he delivers a line that I think gives us all hope and describes my journey. And he says this, it's not until you've been in the deepest valley can you ever know how magnificent it is to be on the highest mountain. That's been my journey. I hope that's the journey for many people who can see a way through. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Eleni. And please support the cause.